Ken, I can't wait till we make stamps with the mint machine. I want to make an address stamp. Whoa. We need to look at the software first. Hmm. Hi, and welcome to Crafts by Two. I'm George. And I'm Ken. And on today's episode, we investigate Mint Studio software, the software you use to make stuff with the Mint machine. Mint Studio for the Silhouette Mint is available free from the Silhouette America website. We'll have a link in the download below so you can go check it out yourself, so you can give it a try before you even buy. So why don't we jump into the software right now, and you can show them how to make their very first stamp. Right, because I read the manual. I didn't. I made him do it. Here we are in the Silhouette Mint Studio. When you first launch the product, you'll be in this menu where you can choose between Design Store Library or Open a Project, and you can say to don't show this again. I'm going to go into Design. I'm going to show you creating a basic stamp first, and then I'm going to talk about some things that we discovered about the software while we were using it. If you haven't used Silhouette Studio before, and you aren't familiar with how they're doing things, you can go ahead and download the Mint Studio for free from the Silhouette website. We'll put a link in the description below because it was a little hard to find on their site. I'm in what's called the design view, and the first thing on the toolbar up top, it takes you to the stamp settings where you can choose the size of the stamp you're going to make. In this case, I'm going to do the 30 by 30, so I've already got that selected, but when you click, it changes really quickly, and you can choose whether or not it's at 0 degrees, or if you're doing something vertical, you can switch to 90 degrees by rotating the view. So I'm going back to zero with the 30 by 30. And you have basic text, um, basic shapes, you have some frames, and then you can do lines or freehand, and then there's the eraser tool. I'm going to do a basic kind of made by stamp. And one thing you can also do is use your own images. So I'm going to bring in one of our logos. We have some of our Craft by Two logos, and I'm going to do a two line transparent. And this is actually the smaller one, which I didn't want. So here's a big one. And you can click on it and resize using the corners. Or you can come over to the toolbar and switch to scale and type it right in. So the 30 millimeter is actually one inch. So I can change this to one inch and click apply to get it to be closer to the size I want. Now this is going to be okay. It's losing a little bit of the detail with a by two. I think I can get a little bigger by thinking outside the box. And instead of making it square and being constrained by those sizes, I'm going to actually, oops, don't want to distort it, resize this a bit and go diagonally so I can get this fitting almost as big as I can make it on this 30 by 30. So there you go. There's the Crafts by Two, and now I'm going to put some text around it. So I can come over to the text tool, and this is going to be really big, so I'm going to set things up here first. I know I want to use a font I like called Second Breakfast, and we'll put the link to this font in the description, and then probably, I think, 11 point. So there's made by, 
and it's going to say crafts by two. And if I do this before, <laughs> it'll remember their settings before I click. So it's going to say made by and then crafts by two with our logo, and then I'm going to put craftsby2.com. to get people to our website. Now Silhouette Studio offers, or the Mint Studio, Silhouette Studio, offers some curved text options. So I can choose this and put it on a circle really easily. And again, this needs to be about an inch, so I'm clicking on the circle, coming over to scale, and I need it to be a little less than an inch, so we'll try 0.8. Give it a little bit of a rotate, and I can click and drag it over. It looks like I could go a little bit bigger. And when you're clicking to scale, you want to click on the circle. If I click on the text, I'll be actually scaling the text, not the overall circle shape. So I'm going to try a 0.9. So that's good. Oops, and I'm rotating just the text there, not the overall circle. Which could work, but I want to be consistent and rotate the circle itself. Now I can come over here and do that, but it's not quite where I need it to be. So first let me size this down. And I'm going to make this a 1. And I want the text on the bottom, so I can click into it, and then this little circle part, I can just grab it and drag and put it on the bottom inside of the circle. So as you can see, as I drag it around, it kind of moves to different positions, the outside or the inside. So that's about where I want it to be. I can drag the circle. And that's just a little tight. I think I'm going to play with the positioning. I'm just using the arrow keys on the keyboard to kind of move things around. So that's how things are going to kind of play out. But the stamp is not going to be in color and like this. Once you're set in design view, you can switch over to the ink preview. And you can do it here on this little mini toolbar or the larger toolbar up top. And now you see these stamp filters. And you can select a part and try different filters for different effects. Your stamp is really going to be just a simple image, and it's your ink colors that are going to be bringing the color. So this is how the stamp is going to play out. And at the bottom, you can adjust different qualities, like this one is brightness for the realistic, or some of the others have contrast and patterns, which can have different effect on your image. And from playing around before, I kind of like this comic fill on our Crafts by 2 logo. The by 2 still kind of shows up and it gets some of the different qualities we have with the different colors and textures in our logo. You can also select other things like the text and then you can also switch up here and do different patterns for the different pieces of your artwork. I'm leaving it on the standard and it really doesn't have much effect on the text. You'll see it hardly changes. So there's our preview of a made by Crafts by 2 stamp. And when I'm ready, I just click on the send to mint and it gives a little preview showing the actual stamp template itself and how it's going to be kind of printed or cut on the 
material and it also shows you how to insert it into the machine. So you'll insert it from the back with a notch on the one side going in and it'll prompt you here when it's ready to be inserted. Another aspect is that you can use your art from your Silhouette library. So you can come over here and show library, but I don't have anything in my library right now. I can go up here and visit the Silhouette site. And then by going to my account, I can browse my purchase designs and then I can choose to download them into the Mint library. If you have a lot of artwork in your Silhouette library though, that can be a bit of a problem. What you can do is using the latest version of Silhouette Studio, you can come up here and go to File and go to Library and then Export your library. And then you would save it somewhere on your desktop that you could find it, and then just switch right back to the Mint Studio and go under File, Library, and Import Library. So if I switch back to the desktop, there's my library that I saved, and you have to log in with the same account, and it lets us know over here that the one image that I had in my library is imported. And now when I'm looking at my library, there's my Christmas scene. And this was another little quirk that we discovered with the Mint Studio, is this is a free vector image, but in the Mint Studio, it's only using the image preview from the library. So it's not as crisp or as great as you might want to use. Being a one inch by one inch stamp, this is not going to be a huge issue, but you're not getting the full quality of these vector images from your silhouette library. Um, you're only getting these low resolution previews instead. Overall though, we found the Mint Studio pretty simple to use once you've played around with it a little if you've not used the Silhouette Studio before. And some of the text features definitely are nice, things that you can't get in Cricut Design Space, for example, um, such as the curved text. One thing we noticed is that this is release candidate software. It's not a final product yet. And there's been a few little quirks. One was we had downloaded the software to prepare, and they had updated since then, and the dialogue that it gave us took us to a blank page <laughs> with an error, actually, and we had to hunt down the update ourselves on their site. So we'll put a link in the description below. So all told, you can make a stamp pretty quickly in like minutes from design to actually printing it out and having your stamp ready to go. So some things that you should know about the Mint Studio. If you're familiar with the Silhouette Studio software, you will have no problems understanding the Mint Studio software. If you've never used the Silhouette Studio software like Ken and I, the Mint Studio has a little bit of a learning curve. Well, just a little bit. It's not that hard. He says that. I locked mine out. I don't know what I did. That's George. I didn't read the manual. But it is release candidate software. We didn't notice any major bugs. Probably the only quirk was when it said it needed an update. It took us to a page that didn't exist. Yep. That was kind of strange. And if you should go to Silhouette America's website and search for Mint Studio, it doesn't find it on the website any place. You have to go to support and then software to get it. It's not even on the Mint product page. Or just use our link in the description down below. I wish I had that link before. You didn't ask me. You were busy reading the manual. 
we're going to be wrapping up our overview of the Silhouette Mint soon. In our next video, we're going to actually be making some stamps and trying them out. We're going to use the inks that come with the Silhouette Mint, and we'll be trying some of our other inks just to see how they work out, to see if you have to use the Silhouette Mint materials. If you have any questions that you'd like us to answer while we play with our mint machine, let us know in the comments below and we'll see if we can get to them in our next video and answer them for you. And George will be able to play with stamps. I can't wait. So don't forget to subscribe to our videos. If you're on YouTube, you can click the subscribe button below. Or if you're on our website, click the subscribe link over to the side. Our link shows you how you can subscribe on YouTube and get email notifications so you don't miss out. I get email notifications. You actually read them? Yeah, I just see them. Yeah, figured. You do the reading. Remember to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Periscope, Twitter, all the scope. We're all over the internet and we want to be social with you. So make sure you follow us on all of them. All those links are in the description. Guess what? It's down below. It's not above? No. There's a big title up there. Mm-hmm. So until next Tuesday, or probably sooner, because George wants to play with the mint. When did George start talking about himself in third person? When George thought he wasn't that important. Hmm. Probably like 20-something years ago. George will have to check with George on that. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. So we can make them now? Sure. Yay. You got something on your elbow. Me. Melody. She ignored Could you me. be here with me, please? I was trying to warn her of her fashion faux pas, but she ignored me. Oh, me? I saw on my elbow? Did you see how she goes out sometimes? I thought you were talking to... She doesn't even remember my name. I thought you were talking to him. <laughs> the scary part is someday she's going to wake up and be like screaming because she's in a strange place because she doesn't even remember where she lives anymore. Or just 